welcome to my CEH version 9. We're doing the Cybex book. We're doing chapter 19, which happens to be the last chapter. And in this chapter, we're looking at the physical security requirements. So this is always a fun one because I think physical security is extremely important as a topic to discuss. Though a lot of people I've dis uh, talked with say physical security is not really one of the cybersecurity areas. So we really don't need to talk about it. So I'm kind of get more excited about this area. So we have to be able to apply very specific secure principles to sites and facility design. So part of that is we have to be able to look at things like a secure facility plan, uh, the site selection, the visibility of the site, natural disasters in based on location, and again, the facility design overall because the facility design will kind of impact things like the visibility and the secure facility plan, because based off the facility, we'll have to be able to create a plan to secure that facility, hence the last step has to come before the first step. So what's in a secure facility plan? This is typically the critical path analysis. It covers things like security for the basic requirements based off the organization, and what technologies could be there. Cameras, lights, sensors, things of that nature. Fun thing is, when we talk about this, we have to do what's called a site selection. Basically, we have to pick a location. And that's going to be location, cost, size, requirements, security requirements. Do you have to build a building? Do you already have a pre-existing building? Will the pre-existing building fit your needs? Uh, is it too close to other buildings? Uh, if you're doing something that requires dry air, is it an open building? Is it a closed building? So you have to think about when you're picking the location, being able to pick it appropriately. Visibility is always a big one. Can people easily see into your facility? Uh, are you higher up than everyone? Are you lower down? Is it zoned correctly? Is it residential, business, industrial? Uh, are you able to get to it on foot, by vehicle? Are there uh, logistic routes to and from you? Is there a high crime, uh, crime rate? Are there emergency services? Well, most of this is kind of weird because within the U.S., most of this is pretty straightforward, but it, not always in the U.S. So we also have natural disasters. I live in Las Vegas, so that's always a good one because within... Uh, Las Vegas, we have very low likelihood of natural disasters. But when you're looking at new facilities, that is one thing that you're going to have to look at is likelihood of natural disasters based on that location. Uh, you may live in Texas, northern Texas. Likelihood of a natural disaster of, like, example, a tsunami. Well, likelihood is fairly low, but you still plan for it, or at least you evaluate it saying likelihood is low, so our plan for this will be developed within the next five, ten years. That works. Facility design is always a good one. This is going to be based off the level of security needs. For example, if you happen to be a bottling plant for Pepsi, well, you're going to have a level of security dictated by PepsiCo. They're going to say this is what you need. This is the level of security that you're going to need. This is how many guards you're going to need, how many cameras you're going to need, but they're going to give you the overall structure. Also, part of that facility design may also be things like, well, what combustible or what, what materials you may have. Is it going to be combustible? Is it going to be having a very specific fire rating? Uh, when the construction is done or when the construction is taking place, what materials are they or are they not allowed to use? Is there a specifically loading rate, assuming that we're going to be loading something? Is there intrusion and emergency access? If required, is there resistance to entry? Basically, can we wall it off? Can we do like 10-foot walls, 15-foot walls? Are they already there? Other design and implementation for physical security are going to be things like equipment failure, wiring closet, all of this is pretty straightforward stuff. Utilities, HVAC, water issues, fire prevention, detection, suppression, 
media storage, server rooms, wire rooms, wire closets, basically the overall infrastructure that run everything, how are we securing each of those? Basic concepts is administrative physical security controls. You want to be able to control them and administer them. You're going to have both admin and technical, or maybe admin slash managerial and technical controls. Part of those controls also may be physical controls. You may have to look at different types of property, corporate versus personal type of property when you're talking about the design concepts for these controls. Deterrence versus denial versus detection versus delay versus cost. I mean, you may want to be able to deny access to your facility, but the cost may be too high. So maybe you try to deter and delay. Equipment failure is always an important one. Mean time before failure or mean time for recovery. SLAs, how quickly can you have certain things back up? Do you have a backup location picked out just in case? Is it a warm site? Is it a cold site? Things of that nature. So some of this is pretty straightforward. Wiring closets, understanding the premise of the wiring closet, understanding the distribution of them, how they function, how to prevent access to them, basically locking them, uh, maybe being able to store the appropriate items in them, don't use them as general storage. Also maybe have cameras on them. My favorite is regular physical inspection of them. Make sure that uh, they are operational, that they are meeting your organization's policy on how they should be maintained. Server rooms, again, uh, they're made to be optimal operations for IT normally located in the core of a facility. Normally we're talking a very specific fire rating for the walls and doors. Maybe not one hour, it may be different based on your organization. Uh, for our organization, we were are required to do a eight hour burn time on our door and our walls. So it just kind of depends on the organization. State, federal regulations as well. Media storage. Where do we actually store media when it's not in use? Is there a check-in process? Do we have a librarian or a managerial person that checks in and out of this? How is it sanitized? Is it sanitized? Is it reused at all? That's always a good one. I work for a state entity and sometimes our sanitation is lacking on some of our storage media. Sometimes it's really good but it kind of depends on who's there and if it's if they know it's going to be verified or not. Evidence storage, that's always a big one. If we're conducting any type of data collection or forensics, how are we storing data? How are we making sure that it's legit? How are we making sure that no one has access to it? All of those are going to be controlled by policies for the organization. Normally, air gap, things like limited access, the appropriate policies for checking in and checking out of evidence items, chain of custody, uh, policies that are strictly adhered to, things like that. Understanding if it's a right uh, blocker, uh, if we're using right blocker, if we're not using right blocker, things like that. Restricted and work area security. This is always a big one. Maybe we have uh, tracking based off of our RFID. Maybe we have cameras. Maybe we have soundproof walls. Walls are partitions that control flow of information. We should have very distinct controls that control access to specific areas. Cameras are a must. Sometimes security guards are a must. Also, if we're looking at a secure facility, do we have our egress and ingress uh, done in such a way where we prevent shoulder surfing? Are we checking IDs as we enter the building? Again, this is all going to be based off the organization and their structure. Data center security, this should be pretty straightforward. Smart cards, cameras, maybe some type of an intrusion detection system. Uh, 
verifying access and verifying access abuse. Cameras are always a big one. When we start talking about utilities and HVAC, normally we're gonna be talking about things that can interfere with our data center, EMI and RFI, electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference. Things also could be basic environment, temperature, humidity, uh, static electricity. If we're talking utilities and HVAC, it could be power cooling. If we're talking specifically power, are we? do we have surge protectors? Do we have surge protectors that have been tested and verified recently? If we're dealing with loss of power, do we have UPSs and generators that have been tested and know are going to be working? Also know the difference between a blackout and a brownout. A brownout sags and spikes and surges. All of those deal directly with power. Water issue, that's always a good one. Water issues could come in many forms. Flooding of your facility, leaking in your facility, which then causes uh, additional issues. Uh, water detection for circuits. Do people know where the shutoff valves are? Is there a specific drainage location? Fire prevention, detection, and suppression. Fire detection is going to be the first one. Understanding that we may have smoke detectors and fire alarms. That's going to be detection. Prevention could also be things like the fire triangle. Understanding that we have sensors throughout the facility that look for fire and heat. Understanding how we do our prevention, or that would probably be more suppression. Understanding where the extinguishers are, understanding how our suppression system will work. Is it a wet pipe? Is it a dry pipe? Is it a pre-action or is it a non-action? Also, is it a gas suppression? Are we looking at uh, halon? Are we looking at uh, CO2? Are we looking at some type of combination? Are we looking at foam? It doesn't necessarily have to be water. Implementing and managing, again, all the physical securities. Normally, we're looking at both internal and external. That could be just things, first of all, with uh, policies. Are we looking, do we have to escort people? Do we have to do visitor badges, keys and locks, cameras? Are they maintained? Are they verified? Are they checked? Understanding that we have perimeter security. That's going to be more of our access control and our monitoring. So what does perimeter really mean? That could be things like our fences, our gates, our turnstiles, our man traps, our lighting or lack of lighting, security guards, dogs. Could also be things like cameras. We have our internal security, keys and locks and access control systems, badges, monitoring systems, monitor detection, could be intrusion detection, could be an intrusion alarm or an alarm. Basically, you enter this area without swiping your card and alarm goes off. Lastly, we have maybe multiple verification processes. So instead of having just show one ID, you have to show two forms of ID. Uh, privacy responsibilities, that's gonna be more based off of policies and procedures for an organization. But I mean, this is a nice, quick, brief overview of physical security and some of the things that may be maintained in this area. That's end for this chapter. If you have any questions or want more depth, please let me know. Because I'm looking at doing in-depth reviews of each individual chapter to kind of supplement our book. Again, any questions, please let me know. 